immediate effects on the markets is that crude oil uh, prices in the states have uh, have decreased because uh, about 15 percent of uh, American uh, oil refining capacity has shut down because of the, the, the storm. Bob, thank you so much for joining Dukas Cobby TV. It's always a pleasure to have you in our studio. Today we're going to talk about the oil, oil markets and a few different things that are affecting production, etc., etc. So let's start with quite a difficult situation actually in the US following the Hurricane Harvey in Texas, obviously a big oil production state in the US. How have uh, sort of refineries and production been affected by this hurricane? Oh, thank you, Jack, and always a pleasure to be here. So, uh, and yes, uh, and, and and as we, you know, the, the crisis is still going on. So, uh, you know, I think we must, you know, think about the 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 experience that people are going through, which Absolutely. is terrible. Um, but it does have an effect on oil markets. Uh, the southeast Texas coast into Louisiana, that that Gulf Coast is the refining uh, hub of America. A substantial part of American co uh, refining capacity is there. Uh, the uh, the Immediate effects on the markets is that crude oil uh, prices in the states have uh, have decreased because uh, about 15 percent of uh, American uh, oil refining capacity has shut down because of the the, the storm, and uh, so the crude oil has nowhere to go. Also, pipelines have been shut off, uh, so the crude oil is trapped. Uh, it's affecting production, but uh, there's you know obviously that capacity is not uh, online. As the storm is now moving into Louisiana, there's uh, apparently threats uh, to, for other refinery closures uh, or, or slowdowns, and so we could be looking at even upwards of 25 to 30 percent of refining capacity, daily refining capacity being taken offline. Uh, so the, you know, that uh, is, is affecting the, the crude oil market again, uh, with, without you know, lacking an outlet. Uh, on the other side, of course, refineries produce product, uh, so the product is not getting to market. That's being cut off. So there has been a very, for example, very significant increase, uh, about you know, at least six percent, in the price of gasoline, uh, and uh, you know, again because that market uh, is, is seeing a, a, a cut in the supply. Yeah. So lower crude prices, higher uh, gas gasoline prices. Has the, has the effect been felt internationally? Uh, not from uh, what I'm seeing. I, I looked at the prices. Uh, you know, there, there is uh, the, you know, the American market. Uh, if, you, if you look at the benchmark oil uh, indicator, which is the WTI, West Texas Intermediate, uh, and the prices based on delivery into the ref uh, pipeline hub of Cushing, Oklahoma, so it's the specific point, uh, that's where uh, you know, the, the price of WTI is reflecting that uh, uh, refinery shutdown uh, effect. And internationally, the, the the main marker for the, which is the seaborne trade. Uh, the U.S. is a pipeline market. You have the seaborne market. That's the North Sea Brent crude complex, uh, which is used to price international oil. That has been uh, stayed remarkably stable. Uh, so that is suggesting it's reflecting other factors. Uh, so it, internationally, supply and demand. Uh, you know, one hears about uh, increased imports into China. Possibly the Chinese government. Uh, there's speculation on this. Uh, is uh tapping up its strategic petroleum reserve. It's a secret number, so people don't really know to what extent, but nonetheless, there seems to be some good, chi strong Chinese demand. Uh, supply problems in, in places such as Libya. So there's a, there's a bit of a disconnect uh, you know, between the two markets and, and fa different factors driving uh, the two. So before we go on to look at the likes of China and, and OPEC, um, let's just have a, a quick few words on Venezuela, continuing unrest there, and, and, and a big oil producer. What, what kind of effects is uh, the, the situation in Venezuela having on the international market? Well, in Venezuela, again, Venezuela is a significant market for Venezuela is the United States. Uh, so there, that's also going to be tied into can they ship their oil? Typically, they would ship the oil into the southern, into the Gulf Coast region, uh, into those refineries. So that's going to have a, 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 a sort of a, also an effect, uh, which could have a, a, a bit of a knock-on effect internationally, maybe 
Venezuela would look to sell their cargoes to, to other countries, which might have these cargoes uh, available, which could affect uh, uh, you know, the price to some extent. Uh, a bit uh, bigger picture, the U.S. has been threatening sanctions against Venezuela because of the political uh, developments there. And one of the possible sanctions is to perhaps, perhaps restrict uh, Venezuelan oil imports uh, into the United States. So again, those cargoes would then probably look to go into the international market. So yes, it, it could have uh, you know, a bit of a dampening effect. But then again, uh, again, you know, what might be offsetting that, uh, perhaps uh, cuts in you know, production problems in Libya and others. Okay, so finally, let's finish up by looking at OPEC and China, who are showing signs of growth. Um, do you expect this to continue, especially with regards to OPEC? What, what can we expect to see next? Well, OPEC, uh, you know, the big story there, you know, the last several years has been a, a story of uh, an oil glut. Uh, prices have collapsed from 100, $110 to hit you know, uh, below 30, and now it's been ranging you know, up around the 50 plus minus. Uh, so still indicating that there's an imbalance uh, which is affecting uh, you know, countries such as Saudi Arabia, oil producers, who, who, who's in, you know, much of their budget is based on the oil price. So they want a higher price. Uh, they try to control the price uh, uh, by uh, entering into a production quota uh, to, to sort of cap production. Um, that seems to be more or less unraveling. Uh, you know, discipline within OPEC has always been an issue uh, going way back. The Saudis have tended to cut more than, than others uh, in order to make up for other people's uh, um, um, lack of discipline on, on that. Uh, so I, I think that um, you know that will continue, and I think exactly what OPIC is hoping to see is the increase in demand uh, in uh, continuing, particularly coming uh, coming out of Asia as a way to to help ultimately prop up the, uh, the you know the, the oil price. And there is some indication again if you look at uh, the forward curves, which is the delivery contracted today for deliveries in the future, uh, which is really a good measure of supply and demand uh, or the expectations for supply and demand as it develops, seems to indicate that internationally the market is possibly more in balance uh, versus what you see in the states where obviously the storm has created a significant uh, imbalance uh, you know, that, that, that will need to work itself through. Bob, thank you so much for coming and speaking with us today. Okay, great pleasure, Jack. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching. And if you like this interview and would like to find out more, be sure to head over to dugascopy.tv.